So let's get into the role play of yeah. multi-classing, which is I, definitely the funnest part of multi-class. Yeah, the, the role play. And I honestly feel like it's the thing that's most lacking. Yeah. In Dungeons and Dragons, because when people multi-class, a lot of times they don't want to to describe or really role play how or why they've multi-classed. Right. It's like, why does your character multi-class? How how did it come to be? You know, what was the purpose in your fighter range uh, in your fighter ranger to take a level of warlock suddenly? Yeah. But I feel like this is this is where people should mine these. This this is it creates such good flavor, and you know, talking about our old characters is usually something we try to not necessarily do. But I think in this case, my my Bree Sabine, my old pirate captain, yeah, her multi class is cleric and barbarian. They don't really mix well. But I role played it so much that I, it it felt satisfying because the barbarian was was what she had to do to survive after everything was taken away from her, and the cleric is a realization of what of being able to gain back that power or just get power to where from from nothing she was you know and learning who did what and why she had to do it. The, this multi-class created a whole way of my, the way my character act, acted, the way people interacted with me. It's like, well, we don't want her to fly into a rage. We don't want to mess with her. She, you know, she can go back and forth. Yeah. Or like, well, we know we we know the the bitches do is coming, and they worship under Umberly, so we know that the sea is with this sea captain. We know that for a fact. That yeah. you're you're not. You're on not on good terms with her at any given time, <laughs> <laughs> and that was the role play of it. The multi class was not to gain an ability. The multi class was it was just to make the story so good, and the whole campaign ended up revolving mostly around my character. Yeah, because it was so I, I thought so much about it and really made it integral to the story, and that's what I think multi, most multi classing should aim for. Yeah, because okay, even in critical role. Travis Willingham, he uh, Ford, <clears throat> his character started out Warlock and eventually, spoilers for anyone who's not up to date on second campaign, uh, he forsake his patron and told him he didn't need him anymore. And he went several sessions powerless, completely powerless. The other, mm -hmm. the other members were having to mm -hmm. make up for him. And then eventually... You know, he, he suck out a new patron, which was uh, one of the deities of one of the other characters. And because of that, he took levels in Paladin. Yeah. And, you know, he sought it out. It, it was explained. And, like, he, he's even still, you know, seeking more on why that is and why he's taking these yeah. levels in Paladin. But because it fits so well in the storyline and he really, you know actively took initiative on it is why his character is one of the more favored characters in the yeah. community and really picking up one of these picking a multi-class does let you really dive into a persona um like batman for instance uh aaron pick tried to be the dark batman which he's this is the monk that outrode the rogue but his, his going the way he did with his monk and going with the warlock patron of the dark patron and gaining all the darkness abilities, he did feel like Batman. One hundred percent. When he was playing in Waterdeep, he felt like the Batman. Um, and you know the way he fought and the choices he made, he was the more demented version of Batman in some cases. So more like a Moon Knight, maybe, um, possibly, or no, yeah. no, no, more like um, uh, the. Oh my god, what was that called? When the Flash went back in time and um, made the alternate universe when he saved his mom and Batman was Batman's dad. Bruce Wayne died. Yeah. So oh, yes, more like that. And like, you know, he used guns and he killed criminals. Yeah. Yeah. Um He was the the darker side of Batman. Yeah, what would happen to Batman in these cases? But that's what that multi class did. It really started giving that feel that that character persona really driving home that that build um had 
had story, had life, like really understanding, you know, what this what this character was, and it it, it was interesting to see and and play off of because that when people multi class and the, they really give good definitions and they really role play up that class, the DM has so much to work with and play with and and give options to when you when you play it up that way. Yeah, because remember when you sent uh. You sent us after Killer Croc. Well, yeah. a version, uh, your version of Killer yeah, Croc. Yeah, my version of Killer Croc. And like, oh man, he, and I, he I had played several, off of that so well. Yeah, I had several of the Batman villains show up uh, during that because even the uh, the little kobold in there was uh, was gonna, the Scarecrow. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Because he had the, the, the chemical mixtures and he was trying to uh, oh. control people with that. He was actually the Scarecrow. Wow. Um but yeah, yeah like it, you know because of how he was role playing mm-hmm. that and like i mean he, he you know he even was even doing like a really good bruce wayne like mm-hmm. trying to fit in with the nobles and me, the way he mingled it yeah. was like, started spot uh, on owning businesses and all that but in the at night he was a totally different person yeah um and that all comes from description it all comes from this this class is doing this and this is doing this and together they create a, a different entity. Yeah. So like you know when you when you really find that reason of like okay, I want to multi class into this because I want to get this. But when you start thinking of okay, well why does my character want to do this? And you know would my character really go after this? And how is you know he or she going to accomplish this? That is gonna one make your character that much better, and two make the game that much better. That much much better. Um, what's even better is when they explain the uh, the level gain of of what they have. They explain it to something that the DM's done in the campaign. Yeah, because a reaction to. Yeah, because uh, like for instance, in, <clears throat> in Critical Role, Matt Mercer, uh, anytime. Uh, uh, his char- his wife's character goes up a level in monk, and it's the the monk that he, uh, the monk subclass that he made. He'll typically uh, bring up an encounter where she gets trained from somebody else in that order, and it's like, hey, you can you now have these abilities, and you can do this, this, and this because this person has trained you. Yeah. Uh, so describing. Describing what th- what this is, this multi class, why you have it, where, what what it does, what it's meant to be, is, is really what people should aim for in this role play with this multi classing. You really should go. Well, what in essence is the paladin? What in essence is the the sorcerer, the warlock, the rogue, the drear? What what are they aiming for? And this subclass, what is what is their what are they meaning to do? How does that affect this class and this class? When I put them together, what does the avenging paladin and a rogue turn into? What is that? You know, what could that be? Yeah, um, and, and, or, and describing you know, that. Yeah, how am I going to describe to that? How am I going to role play that? <laughs> uh, how is is the character going to achieve this? Yeah, or. Another way to do this is describing it to your DM before you ever do it. Like, hey DM, in two levels, I plan on taking a level of fighter. Can you plan something to where maybe uh, I meet somebody that will that will teach me or defeat me, outright defeat me in a fighting style that I want to learn? You know, maybe bring that up so when in campaign... When that comes up three sessions later or four sessions later, five, whatever, that guy all of a sudden meets this monk that is walking around and he talks crap to him. He doesn't even know it's coming and all of a sudden he just gets beat down instantly and the guy's like, oh, is this the guy? Is this what I've been waiting for? And Dean's like, yes, it is. Yeah. And then that creates a whole nother fun story and that's pre-describing how your character got to that moment. Yeah, because, well, I mean, even... Her in the last uh, campaign, you know, he had an artificer mm-hmm. wizard. He mm-hmm. started off wizard, but then he came to my character, who was an artificer, yes. to seek training to become an artificer, and he, and sought out artificers in the you know we're playing Eberron, so the Goblin Nation sought out artificers uh, amongst the humans, 
uh, and just in general wanted to learn that. So he's like, well, I'm going to keep building upon my levels in this class. You know, I started out as this wizard, but really I want to turn my magic inward to make me better. Hmm. And he did uh, just the, that. And he did. He was a great, he was a, it was a great character with a lot of power. Yeah. And it's things mm-hmm. like that, that it makes it more memorable and, and more fun. Mm-hmm. And, it, you mm-hmm. know, it's really going to bring more to your campaign, to your sessions. And it, it's just going to make people that much more excited to come and play the next session. Yeah. And it's one of those things, if, if you can create the right amount of fun to it and memorable, then years later, people will remember why that happened. And multi-classing gives you the ability to create some memories like that because you're going to get abilities you wouldn't normally have or be able to do you know things could happen to you that create this things like yeah my best friend died we played that out remember that session and then after that i went full barbarian because of the rage it gave me because my best friend died in the game and you know that's what you want. Yeah, that's or what you want. or maybe you have that <clears throat> that fighter or barbarian who suddenly took level took levels in sorcerer, mm-hmm. became a draconic sorcerer, and it's like, oh, I've got draconic blood in my line. Well, who's my dad? Yeah, who's my mom? Who's my great great granddad? Yeah, like like, like what? where does this draconic bloodline come from? We need to find them. Yeah, bam, <clears throat> story arc that is going to drive the campaign in a different direction that could be uh, just so much fun. Yeah. So just remember with, with this, description is not at the time it happens. Description is before, during, after, along with the DM, and along with your party. There's five things you need to do with the description. You need to make sure that it fits so it's fun for everybody. Yes. Um, so taking that level just in something else... Just remember, just describe it. Just go with it. Connect your other party members to it. Connect your DM to it. Connect the world to your description, and you will have so much more fun. Absolutely. And everybody else at the table will have that much more fun. Yep. And uh, I think that's a good way to end the role play. Yeah. So now let's let's get into the homebrew options. Yeah, we got a few for you. Mm-hmm. 